Hi everyone, my name is Wendy and I am a library assistant at Taylor Memorial Library. I'm also an archival assistant and I help with digitizing archival materials and making them more accessible to all. Today I'm going to show you where to go to access these digitized items and give you a tour of our archives web pages. Let's start on the landing page for Centenary University. You can find the link for the library underneath Academics, so click Academics and then click Library. This takes you to our library page on the Centenary University website. The library has its own website, so to access that, scroll down and click Get Access. This is the landing page for the Taylor Memorial Library. From here, you can search for anything we have in our physical and digital collections, learn more about our services and programs, get help with research, or find out more about your library. We are going to look at our resources for the archives, so scroll down to the box named Library Links. Click the link for the archives. The archives webpage includes links to our digital platforms, including some curated collections we want to highlight. We also have links and contact information for those with archival research questions in case they can't find any information in our digital repository or found some and want more. Our finding aids help describe the contents of collections and the policies and forms help you understand what we preserve and why. If you're using an archival source and need to cite it, we have help for that too. Today what I want to do is show you how to access our digital repository. What is a digital repository? It's basically a place where we store digitized items that you can look at. So we're going to navigate to our Digital Collections tab and then click Digital Collections. From here, you can see links to some of the collections we've compiled, including our alumni publications, student publications, yearbooks, and digitized collections. If you want to search in just one of these collections, you can click the picture to go to that specific collection within our digital repository. What I want to do is show you how to start a search from scratch, so we'll hop back up to the top and click Digital Repository. Welcome to DSpace. This is where we store our digitized collections, and from this landing page you can see the communities we've created, as well as seeing some of the more recently added items. On the left are a few boxes with different options, Search, Browse, My Account, and Discover. Typing something into the search box will allow you to search all our collections at once. Browse gives you specific searches, including selecting from all of our collections or by issue date, author, title, or subject. Creating a login using My Account allows you to subscribe to collections and be notified when new items are added. The Discover tab shows you the authors, subjects, and issue dates, so you can narrow a search. Let's say you wanted to find out about a student named Betty Cooper. You don't know much about her, so you want to do a basic search and see what there is. You can type her name into the search box to start. So as you can see, we have 55 pages of results. Just by doing a quick search, you can see that we are getting results for Betty Cooper, but we're also getting results for other people named Cooper, as well as other variations of both Betty and Cooper. The Hack Yearbook for 1939 has the word cooperation highlighted, which technically is a match for the word Cooper, as all the letters are in the same order, but that's not what we're looking for. So, we do the same search, but put quotation marks at the beginning and end. Now, we're looking at all of the results for Betty Cooper. As you can see, we have a total of 19 exact results. If you look at the Discover box on the left, the Author, Subject, and Date Issued boxes are now updated to reflect these results. So if you wanted to look at items from student newspapers, you could isolate your results by just clicking Student Newspapers. If you look to the right, at the top of the list of results is a gear. Click that to change the order your results appear in or to show fewer or more results per page. The Add Filters option, visible just below the search box, 
also allows you to narrow your search using the same filters as are listed in the Discover box. By adding a subject filter that contains student newspapers, you will see the same results as if you clicked the student newspapers link below Discover. You can also add a filter for not contains. So you could do a search for results on Betty Cooper that removes student newspapers, for example. This is how you do a search for something we have in our digital collections. What I want to do now is show you our Communities and Collections page. This page lists all the collections we've digitized, so you could take a look at the kinds of things we've made available. To learn more about a collection, click it to see its description, as well as the most recent submissions. You can also search within this collection, or isolate the contents of the collection by clicking one of the limiters below Discover, or by browsing all the issue dates, authors, titles, or subjects within this collection. Now that you've got a basic idea of what our digital repository looks like, we hope that you take the time to browse through its contents and learn a little bit more about Centenary University. The archival staff answers requests for research about historical materials. So, if you are having trouble finding anything or want to know if there is more information on something, you can find our contact info at the bottom of the Taylor Memorial Library Archives webpage. What kind of tutorial do you want to see next? Let us know! Happy researching!